Thank you. Fine. I have some kind of specific questions that I was going to put them in the chat, but I wonder if you could take us back to the last map that you showed us in your slide deck, the one that gives us kind of an overview of what's going to be starting on March the 15th. Um, the part of the pro yeah, the first part of the project. <clears throat> sure. I don't think I have a map that shows that, but it, um, this is the timeline that kind of listed out. And then I can go to the map as well. Uh, that PDF map that you have that has the lines on it that shows where the work's going to be done. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I'm I I don't want to belabor my uh, problems with this entire group because I know you've got a lot to speak to, but uh, we here on Westwood had the experience of having our sewer and water lines replaced two years ago, and so we had some had some experience with this. One thing that I wonder if you could if you could tell me, I heard you say that if there's a um, a property um, damage issue, that that is the responsibility of the uh, contractor. Is that is that your understanding? Yes. Um, so um, I had such an experience last year, and um, in my in the process of working through that. One thing that was explained to me was that my first point of contact on that should have been the city inspector on the project. Is that not true? I think that's a good place to start. Um, and then from there, um, you know, it's, it's kind of the documentation that you have. That, that seems right. Uh, and then they well, go to the contractor. Yeah, so well, I ask, I yeah. ask because you've told us the name of the contractor, but we don't have any direct contact information from them. For them. So I'm assuming that if we start, if we, if we run into something that we see perceive as a problem, what we ought to do is talk to the inspector, right? Yes, ma'am. Is he going to be on site? He should be on site um, at, at least um, partial in, you know, Every day, partial days as as they're going through things. Uh, right. It won't be twenty four seven. He won't be on site, but you can always call him or email him, or me. So, you can call me or email me. Okay. So one follow on question on that, and then I'll be quiet and let somebody else ask a question. Um, we had um, Atmos um, through here um, last year replacing gas lines and. One thing that t troubled us periodically was that we couldn't identify who was an at Atmos contract worker and who was not. Is there going to be a way for us to easily identify the Woody contract people who are working in the area? I I would think so, but I don't know for sure. So I will I will have to ask on that one. Um, uh, this, this is Zach, Kathy. This is Zach with the contractor. Um, oh, hey, our hi. yes, our uh, our guys will all have vests that that have our logo and, and uh, company name on the back. Uh, we will have some subcontractors out there. I can't really control whether or not they put their logos on their vests, um, but um, you will you will have you will at least be able to identify the Woody contractors people. Um, but we we like I said we do have some subs that. Uh, you might not be able to identify, but we'll have a foreman on site um, that that if you have any questions, you can go up and talk to him any any time of the day, all day. So good. he's always there. Good, yeah. good, good. That's that's what I I I wanted to know. We we began to be able to identify the Atmos people by their um, their glow in the dark work vests or whatever. Uh -huh. um, and and and. Uh, but of course, those were pretty generic. But it's it's good to know. Thank you. I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna be quiet now and see if somebody else has got something to ask. Yep. Let me go to the chat questions. Uh, Kathy, we answered yours. Uh, Leo Williams said we have a whole home water filtration and water softener system. How will this project impact our system? So he's asking about a water filtration and softener system. Great question. I, I can't say that I know the answer. This is Zach again. It, it, it shouldn't affect his system at all. 
because uh, all we're going to do is is uh, disconnect his service where it is now and then reconnect the new service. Uh, so it shouldn't change anything for him. Okay. Thank you, Zach. Um, David Griffith asks, what is the rough estimated date for Sherwood construction to start? And he's um, specifically Sherwood near the Bailey intersection. Do we have a schedule yet? Uh, we do that area um, is towards the end of the project. Um, that's maybe, and don't quote me on this later, but it, it should be <laughs> uh, towards the beginning of 25, kind of the January, February, um, and then we'll, we'll be in there for a few months. So, uh, but it should be next early next year that we're actually down there working. Okay. And then Kathy Kelly said, what technique boring or trenching will be used to place the uh, sewer line? Uh, there's actually three different methods on this project. Um, the stuff out in the street will all be open cut. So we'll have trenches. Um, and then we've got some areas that have <clears throat> sewer easements in their backyards. Um, so some of those will get what's called uh, pipe enlargement, where we fuse HDPE pipe and, and pull it through the existing main. Um, and then there's two, uh, two locations that get CIPP, which is very similar to the uh, pipe enlargement, but um, they're, they're both going to just be it's almost like boring, but it's, it's not quite that, but, um, in the backyards, no, no open cut, but except for the services, um, in order to connect your service, we are going to have to bring a small excavator in the backyards. Um, and, and there, there will be some disturbance in, in those backyards. So, but, but we'll be coming around talking to you guys and let you know what exactly what's happening. So before we get started in there. So. So, Zach, this is Kathy Kelly again, uh, David Griffin, it's my neighbor. He's on Sherwood, I'm on Westwood, and I, I'm the lucky owner of the 90 degree angle that you see there on the bottom of the screen and that sewer line, which is along um, my, <clears throat> my back, the, the back lot line for my house and along the short line between myself and my neighbor. Along both of those lines, there are major, uh, massive is a big word, but they're big trees, um, fences all the way along both of those lines, um, and a couple of outbuildings, um, and the entire area is fenced. So um, I would think that it might be useful um, before you nail down completely what techniques you're going to use if you could actually walk that and take a look at it and be sure you've got a, some good scope on what you're going to have to do. I don't myself understand how um, you could get um, a good sized piece of machine machinery to the corner of that L that you see on that in that um, drawing. Uh, you know, you'd have to take down a couple of fences. David, yours okay. is probably yours is probably one of them, and I think David, you've also got a little rock wall along there too, don't you? Uh, yes, between us and the neighbor. Yes, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that does that go between our houses? I guess is what that line is probably. Yeah, it's going between you and the folks just to your west. So it's going along the three the three houses on. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and all of those neighbors have got fences. Yep, sure enough. And then there's a brand new fence between me and my neighbor just to the north. So who plays yeah. to replace the fence then? Um, well, I think if we understand correctly from what um, Clayton told us, the responsibility for damage falls to the, um, the contractor for which, for which reason, 
it would be really useful for us to understand pretty clearly what the claims process is. Yes, Somebody because that? this is Tony Sharala of the city. So as fans goes, like uh, Zach was explaining, when if they have to take down the fence to go restore your sewer service, they'll take the fence down and put it back as as uh, as they found it. He's obligated to do that. Now we've had situations where people want better than what they had before, but the contractor is obligated to put things back like he found it. So if you are not uh, happy with the way you put it back. There's processes for that. You can reach out to uh, Zach, his format, Inspector Clayton, but we're obligated to put it back. But we must get back in the back and restore the service, which, like he said, on the pop, I mean, basically, he described three me methods or so on. One is open cut, and the other two are literally trenchless. One of those two trenchless methods, like Zach said, involves digging up a little hole to reconnect your service. The other one, there's robotic cutters that go in there and cut it. So to re restore your service line. So either way, we probably would need to be in the backyard to make things right. So you'll make sure you get total service like you had before. And most of those sewer lines, if I recall correctly, are back from the 40s and 50s. So it is now time to replace them. But as far as uh, our fences go, you'll put them back. As far as grass goes, whatever it digs up, they'll put it back. So that's that's the procedure. Well, I, I, I appreciate that very much, Tony, and I, I, you know, one of the things that we know about this neighborhood is that these houses were built in the, in the late 40s, most of them. So, so we, we're, we understand that the sewer lines need to be replaced, or at least I certainly understand that. However, I have great, grave concern about the situation of a particularly uh, beloved uh, 85 foot pine right on the um, right on the property line um, under what or over what this replacement where this replacement will necessarily have to go and it's one thing to replace the fence but uh, that tree if the tree um, were badly damaged it would cause all kinds of havoc um, all kinds of different ways so I'm really concerned about that and um, that's why I think that a, a site visit might be useful for you all so that you can kind of gauge the scope of the uh, possible damage that you're looking at. Hi, Kathy. Well, this I, is really all, that, all, that, me, please. all that assessment has been done. If there's a tree that's in the way when the contractor gets there, he'll check back with us. We might be able to go trenchless on that such trees. But as you all very well know, the trees of roots go all over the place. We've had situations where tree roots have literally inundated the sewer line. So until the contractor gets in there and starts digging, if there's a tree root that's literally gone through the sewer line, we're going to have a problem. So we we'll try to preserve trees as best as we can. Again, I'm not going to deceive or lie to you. In some cases, we have to take down trees. In most cases, the contractor will do his utmost to preserve such a tree or trees that are in the way. But and luckily for, I mean, fortunately for us in this situation, we've got one of the better contractors in town. They'll pay attention to detail. And uh, again, like Zach said, he can reach out to his foreman, him, or the owners come around pretty frequently. So we'll try to make that happen. But we'd be, we would not be telling the truth if we tell you that sometimes trees are, are going to have to come down depending on where they are located. If we can save a tree, we'll try our best to do it. Go under it without digging a trench, but in some cases, you never know. If it's an oak tree, those 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 roots go pretty deep. There's some trees spread all over the place, and sometimes you just can't avoid cutting roots. But one of our goals is to try to preserve as many trees as we can. Uh, I appreciate that, Tony. I'm I'm going back to I'm. This is kind of late in the game to disclose this, <clears throat> but I'm a lawyer, so I'm thinking that way. Um, if if uh, if we had a claim with regard to damage to a tree, and we had it, had to place it to the contractor, um, it's going to be really valuable for me to have an understanding of, of what process you, the city, expects of them in that circumstance. 
So let so, me run this by you. Oh, sorry. So you finish first. I'm sorry. That's it. So as far as trees goes, again, I hate to be a devil's advocate, but trees are situated in public right away. So in some cases, like I said, we can try to see it, save it. But if it's a tree that's sitting in a private right away, then we, I guess we can have discussions on that. But sometimes trees just sit in public right away. And that's a public right away. So we can have discussion on that, but we'll try our best to save trees that as we go along. Correct, Zach? Tony, is that this is that's, that's correct? And, and Kelly, like, like I said earlier, or Kathy, sorry, uh, like I said earlier, um, we will any backyard that we're going to be getting into, we're going to meet with you. We'll walk the backyard. We'll, we'll try to find the best route possible to get back there to where we don't tear up too much. And then I also understand your concern with the trees. We're, we're going to do our best. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I've got one more question, then I promise, I promise I'll be quiet. Um, and this is a design question. Why is it that the sewer um, line um, that services my house is not in the street? Um, so let me see if I recall that. If it's, if, it's, if it's back in the backyard, we're probably not going to move it out to the street because there's a bunch of services connected to it. And then you can imagine taking the sewer line out from your backyard and put it in the street without to cut your side yard, people's front yard. So if it's feasible to leave the sewer line where it's at, that's our number one goal. That make sense? It does. I'm trying to I'm I'm thinking about the evaluation that you ran about what was the what was gonna cause the least what would be Especially, the least Especially if there's an easement for that sewer line, we're most likely than not going to leave it where it's at because just to reroute all those services will mean taking everybody's side yards and that's that big a whole lot of people unhappy. So basically, the sewer line is there, it's in the easement, so that's where it's going to stay. I understand. Thank you. Tony, is there okay, a place we... that they can, Tony and or Clayton, is there a place that they can see um, the individual sheets and look at their houses? Cause um, like Tony and Clayton said, we did go out and do evaluations um, and we've got some by the open cabin in different areas trying to preserve trees. So it might be helpful if they could look at the plans and see where their house lies in that, lays in that. Is that Rhonda, unless you've got your yeah. point, Rhonda, I don't have a set of drawings with me. I guess if we had an in-person meeting, that might be more feasible. But if folks want us to come by, I'm sure Clayton will be happy to go and meet with folks and show them where things are located. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. And I just didn't know if there was a, a place that they could be that they're posted. You know that the citizens no, could not, see. Not at this point in time. Okay. But we have to go, click, click to be happy to go out and visit. How, how about this? How about I'll follow up with? Um, shall I go through Tony or shall I go through um, Clayton? Clayton is um, the project manager, so go. Okay, to I'll go through. I, this is Kathy again. I'll go through Clayton and I'll arrange with him to look at those detailed drawings, and maybe that'll give me some some answers to some questions. Thank you. Like I said, if you're wanting to come out by the residence or the, in, the, in your area, he'll come and show share it with you. Thank you. Okay, let me get to these two questions in chat. Um, Glenda Moreno. Uh, she said, Clayton said the first project will be Northwood Road starting at Rockwood Park to Oaklawn. How many days is that anticipated to take? So she's asking about Northwood Road from Rockwood Park to Oaklawn. Do we have calendar days for each segment? Um, in, in there, I've got probably between 60 and 80 days to get the water and sewer in the in the concrete flat work done in there um, but then they'll be on temporary asphalt the remainder of the project until the very end um, so we'll, we will be coming back and it won't be your permanent fix but it, it'll be workable and livable for for a long time and we'll maintain it over there it's just uh all, all the paving is going to be done at the end on this project. Um, but like I said, once, once we get water and sewer installed, we'll install temporary asphalt. 
Um, it, it'll be a drivable road, but it won't be your finished product until the very end. Okay. Uh, so, Leo Williams uh, asks, where can we find the claims process in case of damage? Do we have a form? Thank you, we'll share. We have, uh, you're going to have to go to our risk management if it gets to that point. And there are certain points that uh, there are certain uh, forms that can be filled when you go through risk management. You'd have to file a claim with the city and risk management will correspond with you. But most of the time, like I said, we have a pretty good contractor. They try to resolve all their issues, except, yeah, that we have a pretty good contractor, so we shouldn't get to that. That's all we've got in the chat. Does anybody else have any questions? Except for Kathy. <laughs> Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. This is Glenda Moreno. Uh, I had the question about the, the very first segment of the project. Um, so, a time frame of 60 to 80 days was man mentioned. So during that 60 to 80 days, because there are only on that street, there are only five houses on that portion between Rockwood Park Road and Oak Lawn. So there are five houses, I believe. Um, so yeah, during that time frame, when does there have to be work done in the backyards of these homes? Uh, I don't think in that that it, in that area there. I don't believe there are any uh, backyards that we need to get in. Everything okay. is on the street over there. Okay, you're pretty certain about that. I'm okay. pretty certain. Yes. Okay, great. That's good information. Thank you. Okay, uh, do we have any other questions from the residents? And if I might add, like Clayton said, this is the first part of the project. So we're not in an attempt not to inundate the entire neighborhood. We're working from the inside portion of the neighborhood out. So once this is finished, then we'll go out with the second portion and that should take care of the entire neighborhood. But we couldn't put out both projects at the same time for that reason. So. Just got to start from the inside and walk our way out towards the street. When this, once this job is finished, we'll get going with the second project. Okay. Uh, let me run down this list and see if anyone has a question. Uh, Barry Green, do you have a question? Okay. Uh, Blythe, I think you had you, you had your questions or you were in the chat. Um, let me look, Don Keenan, Frank Diaz. Uh, we've got Jill, Leo Williams, Liz Moore. Okay. Uh, the, um, Recording of this meeting will be posted to the project page. The PDF of this PowerPoint will be, will be on the project page as well. So you'll be able to uh, give us at least uh, till Wednesday to get the video up and we'll uh, run through the questions so you can, you can hear what happens. Sally? Yes, ma'am. Hey, it's Glenda Moreno. I just have one follow up question since okay. this is we're, <laughs> since I live on the little portion that we're kind of the guinea pigs, I guess we're the first ones <laughs> you know, uh, for for this construction. Um, so um, this may be a very, you know, uh, you know, question that that should be self explanatory. But it, in this portion again from on Northwood Road, very first um, segment North uh, Rockwood Park Road uh, to Oak Lawn, that little portion of Northwood Road. Is all of this work going to happen physically in the street, not in anyone's like actual home front yard property? Is that correct? 
Zach? Okay, the uh, the water and sewer mains will be installed in the street, but we will have to get just a little bit onto your property um, at the right of way to connect uh, the new water meter and then to connect your new uh, sewer line just right on the property line. Uh, but we okay. won't be all the way up in your yards. Okay, but we'll we'll be made aware of that before it's happening, the individual property owners. Um, before, yes. like, like we said earlier, um, when we go to connect your water meter, we'll have to come and knock on your door and let you know that we're about to turn it off. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so, yes, you will get some notification on the water. On the sewer, we probably, we don't typically. Um, because it doesn't it doesn't really affect you because uh, you can still use it at, as normal. So we sure. don't typically come knock on your door. Is this um, water meter change out and everything is that is that going to entail digging up the front lawn? Yeah. Yes. Right where the water meter is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you for the information. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. And then just one other thing, just so you guys are aware, um, if you if you just kind of pay attention. To where we are one day, um, it's that'll kind of determine which way you want to come into your streets. Um, cause, cause you'll notice when we work one day, we'll be in front of one or two houses. And then the next day we're kind of in front of the next one or two houses and we'll kind of move down the street that way. So if you just want to pay attention to kind of where the crews are working, that'll help you to navigate your neighborhood because it kind of changes mm -hmm. day to day. Um, mm -hmm. but we will work to get you in and out of your driveways. Um, just the people that are right where we're working might have a little bit of trouble, but we'll try to knock on your doors and, and let you get your cars out before we do start digging a hole right in front of your driveway. Um, so I just wanted everybody to be aware of that too. So like Zach said, the first line of contact is the city inspector. If the inspector is not available, the contractor, superintendent or supervisor will always be on the job site. And if all fails, you can always email uh, Clayton. Okay, do we have any other questions? Sally, could they show again the contact information for the inspector? It went by kind of quickly on the screen. Yeah, Clayton, can you go back to the, I think it was the, there, there you go. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Like Clayton, like Clayton mentioned earlier, if you are, you feel free to take pictures, videos of your front yard, backyard, whatever you can do in case there's dispute, and you can always have your information available for everybody to see that hey, this is the way it was. That helps a lot too. Tony, Clinton, yeah. Sally, thank you so much for putting this together. It's extremely helpful. And um, I, I, I really appreciate your time and effort to do this for us. You're welcome. You know how to get in touch with us. So if you have any questions during the uh, process, just let us know. And thanks for listening. This project has been in the works for a while. Some of you have probably thought the city was never going to come by because I've been around a while when water main breaks were breaking in the area and we come packing. So hopefully you're getting our 50 year cakes and uh, that should be a good deal for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.